before we get to that, we're going straight this morning to Greg Hahn with IPTV's uh, Idaho Reports. He's joining us live this morning to help break down some of these national races. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we know that President Barack Obama reelected last night, but a, a pretty close, popular race there, Greg. But the bigger question at this point is, you know, kind of business as usual, though. I mean, Republicans retaining. Exactly. The, the House. The House. Republicans hang on to the House. The Democrats hang on to their slim majority yeah. in the Senate. And uh, in the White House, of and course. The White House. <laughs> so is, does that mean that the, the, the fighting is going to continue? To a degree, absolutely. Uh, you, know, you know, I think you might be fooling yourself to think, well, just because this one race is over that uh, everything's going to be smooth. I mean, that said, uh, there certainly has been a motivator on one side to keep the president from being reelected. Now that's no yeah. longer uh, an issue, and it kind of depends on uh, whether folks can work with him uh, now that, you know, knowing that this is his last four years. I mean, that has to help. Right, um, right. I mean, and also it seems like when it's the last four years, they tend to maybe push more. Well, maybe. that's true. I mean, he's gonna, but, that, but the question is, does he push more for the sort of uh, um, kind of more liberal ideals maybe right. of that side of the aisle or for getting some like real long-term things done of course with the debt uh, you have some issues right away I, I will say that there some of the races in the senate uh, maybe make it seem like things could could be a little bit more civil uh, a couple of the more extreme sort of the folks who anger folks especially with the rape com com right. comments murdoch aiken in indiana missouri they both lost to democrats i mean that was a pretty big blow to a certain conservative uh side so if you're if your hope is to get sort of some moderate folks who can kind of talk across the aisle uh, that might be a good sign. Um, one of the other things that I know is that we're, uh, you know, some folks may say this will help. A record number of women running for the Senate. Uh, you know, we talked earlier about demographics this morning. Uh, you know, maybe there's a point where that, some of that actually changes the discussion. Because uh, record number of, I mean, really minorities and women helping to get Obama reelected, but then more women get getting elected. Getting, getting in yeah. office, yeah. You've got, you know, Elizabeth Warren, Claire McCaskill, those are kind of some of the big names in Wisconsin, uh, Tammy Baldwin won. So there will be there will be some different players, and different players always always help, I think, in, get, in breaking the gridlock. And we were talking during the break about how we, nowadays it seems like the parties are kind of getting farther and farther yeah. apart from each other with the conservatives and the liberals. Do you think there's becoming more of a space where someone can jump right in the middle, or do you think that both of those parties are going to continue to reach into the middle when it's election time to try and get their guy in office. Well, you know, that's always how it works. I mean, I think that's how the country has stayed on this relatively stable path, is that you, all, you have two parties coming out from different angles. At the end, you know, you, you find somebody who can Some reach across the aisle, because you have to get that many more people to vote. And you can really see it's pretty split. So you have, you're reaching across the aisle. I would think uh, that the Republican Party, you know, every time, obviously, the, the folks who lose have to kind of go through and rethink it. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier today how they may be sort of aiming at some of these growing minority populations, Hispanic, uh, Latinos, especially because they're kind of a, uh, going after kind of some family-oriented mm -hmm. pro-business folks. But there will be some, you know, the Tea Party will, I think that the, a lot of the question for me comes with what Paul Ryan, who is in a really good spot, you know, never wasn't, I don't think anybody argued that he maybe hurt, that he hurt Romney's campaign. He sort of emerges out of this as a young leader in the party, and he's very conservative, as we know. If his lesson is, boy, having that guy who's been perceived as moderate all these years really hurt us in the long run, we need to go, we, you know, we need to hold true to those ideals that worked two years ago when Raul Labrador and a whole bunch of other Tea Party favorites were elected. Um, you could see an even more, uh, confrontational presidential. So do you see him running in 2016, Paul Ryan? And if so, who else might be running? I, you know, I think he has to be thrown in that early hat. Uh, uh, Marco Rubio, right. Jeb Bush. Um, there, there are a lot of sort of, you know, I suppose Chris Christie, but I can't imagine that happening. I can't see that <laughs> happening now, right? Yeah. So Maybe two weeks ago. Interesting okay. stuff happening on, on both sides Absolutely. of the aisle. And of course, everyone hoping that they'll come together somewhere in the middle of yeah. that aisle and get some things done and the in, same, in Congress the same this year. Fight. So we're going to be having the same fight. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And Greg, thanks so much for coming in. I know it was an early morning, so we appreciate you coming in and breaking all of yeah. this down no, for thanks. us. Thanks. It's been great. Great yeah, analysis. Thanks, Greg. All right. And Bree, 